This is 15 Minutes of Freedom. I'm your host, Elite Life Optimization Coach Ryan Nidell, and today coming to you live from Detroit, Michigan, I have acclaimed adult actress, Kendra Lust. Kendra, thank you for having me to your home. Well, thanks for being here. And I'm excited. <laughs> You've been incredibly kind to invite us up, right? Like we're, we're shooting on a Friday night way past normal business hours. For sure. And it's just so cool to have got to spend a few hours getting to know you now. Yeah, it, it has been. What time did you get here? 8.30? Aw, perfect. There's my babies on there. Yes. So yeah, just a few hours. I feel like we've talked about so much and, and then we haven't gotten to actual filming, but that's okay. But we're here now. Yes. And that's the important part. Yes. And I love the multifaceted nature of who you are, Thank right? Because obviously we have adult film star, but that's like, in my mind, that's like over in the corner. That's like this little fragment and segment of who you are because we got wife. Yes. We got incredible mother. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Entrepreneur. Whew. That's a work in progress, but yeah, for sure. Yes, absolutely. I think I'm trying to, um, uh, I don't want to say do what other people are not doing or just kind of take the plunge into business owner, but um, I don't know, separate myself. Um, and, and I don't know, I don't know where I'm going with this, but yeah, I think just kind of take initiative to plan for my future and that's kind of where I'm at. Well, absolutely. And you have a lot of things. I know we won't touch base on all of them, but you have so yeah. many things in the works to propel your career forward in perpetuity, like for forever, right? You're, you're looking long-term. This is not, yeah, no. Hey, I'm on film for this amount of time and yeah. I'm just going to continue to make a living this way. Like you're diverse. Yeah, I tried. I tried to, I, I think I understand shelf life mm -hmm. and, um, kudos to a lot of the women who, uh, like Nina Hartley, she's been in the industry for an incredibly long time. Like 30, 30, 40 oh years now, it seems like, like right? Like the eighties. Crazy. And, um, you know, still kind of owning what she does. But, but for me, like my life is, is, um, is, is a little different and the kind of the path that I want to take. So for me, I, I love to perform and I always tell people I'm, I'm a performer first. However, I want to kind of, I'm intrigued by the business aspect mm -hmm. and, 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 and what I can do with that. And, um, yeah. So for me, that's, I don't know. They're both sex is always number one. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but, but I, I am, I, I think about passive income and, and how I don't always have to be on to be, um, creating revenue. Of course. So. But when you say that, like passive, you're finding out now from the entrepreneurial side. Yeah. It's not really passive. Like you said last night, you were working until two o'clock in the morning, like yeah. working, working. Yeah, I was, I was, you know, and I mean, I was, I was physically in front of the camera for part of that, but then the other part was kind of brainstorming and, and, and thinking, okay, how are we going to do this? Or how can we strategically plan, you know, this to, to make this happen? So, um, I think it's all relative in mm -hmm. all honesty. Absolutely. Yeah. Because you have, you're not only in front of the camera, you also do work behind the camera too, right? I do. But in all honesty, I'm really horrible at directing. And I know that I own it 100%. I thought, oh my gosh, yeah, I'm going to direct. I'm going to produce, have this production company, Lust Army Productions. And I was really excited and really proud of it uh, when I launched it. However, when I started to actually direct, I realized I'm much more intrigued about being in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. I am an exhibitionist um, for whatever reason. I love sex. I love pleasing others. And for me, I would get so wrapped up in watching the sex in a voyeuristic type of, of mode that I neglected my duties as director. Mm -hmm. I would just like, I want to be there. Oh, you know, and I would really get into it. And, and for me, like it, okay. All right. Okay. Um, let's take a step back. Like, okay, maybe you're not so good at this. Yeah. You wanted to do that. You wanted the autonomy to, to say, to say, this is the type of scene I want. This is the scenario, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, I'm, I think I'm always going to be a performer first. And because of that, I got lost as a performer and mm -hmm. neglected my, um, director duties and, and, and that's okay. And you know, it's, it's self-awareness and learning what you're good at. And I'm really not that great at it. So it is what it is. Lesson learned. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah. Under the lesson. Costly lesson. 
I was going to say, but, how many films are underneath the Lust Army right now? Yeah, no, I mean, I did six movies. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, 24, 25 scenes. But, um, you know, it was it was, it was was cool to kind of get my feet wet. And, and I feel like if you don't shoot, you don't know if you're... If you don't shoot, you can't score. And, it, you know, you kind of have to put yourself out there and see what you're good at and, and try different things. Like you said, diversify. And uh, ultimately, that's not my thing. And I respect, I have the utmost respect for for great producers and directors um, because it is more than what people think. It, 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 the actual job itself is more than just directing. I mean, it's, it, there is a lot to it. And for me, I didn't like that pressure mm -hmm. when um, I'm in front of the camera or behind the camera. I don't know, I just wanna perform, that's it. I just wanna do what comes natural. And for me, that's just sex. I think it's so beautiful to know your zone of genius, right? Like yeah, that's what I, I call it with yeah. That's your thing. That's my thing. But that's been your thing, right? Like you've, I'd love to talk about if you're okay with it, just the background Whatever. of yeah. you and your husband, right? Like, in, yeah. and being together. When did you guys first meet each other? Okay. So we met in elementary school. I was the new fourth grader coming in like at the end of the year. And I remember my parents being nervous, like, okay, you know, at the end of, you know, the school year, they're going to be uh, transitioned into a new school. And, um, my husband at the time was in fifth grade. And um, he didn't like me very much, but I was a new girl and I don't know, I, I had the worst haircut in like fourth grade. I don't even know how anybody thought I was cute, but I made a really cool friend, April Shaco. I went to high school with her, she's awesome. And um, I don't know, it, it, I mean, people were receptive to me and, and um, all except for him, I guess. He was like, I don't like that girl or whatever. It was kind of a tomboy, but, but yeah, we met uh, years ago and um, yeah, our, our relationship kind of evolved. Like middle school, we didn't really pay attention to each other. And then high school, when it kind of developed or whatever, he he was intrigued a little bit. Um, and we started dating then. So, yeah. So, started so dating in high school. Mm hmm. Yeah, so 14. Many, so, you guys have been together a fair amount of time. Right? A long we, don't, time. We, we don't have to name ages. Yeah, and, like and that, I'm not ashamed. I'm proud. Like, I, I own. My age, I own. Yeah, I'm o I'm okay. I I'm the type of woman like I don't want to be. Um, I'm not trying to be 25. Mm -hmm. Like I own, own my age and 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 who I am. I I just don't want to be looking older than what I am. So I'm I'm totally good with who I am. Right. For sure, hundred percent. And so, you guys dated in high school. Mm -hmm. Then he trans like. There was this transition period mm -hmm. where you went to college, right? Because yes. you have a yeah. nursing back, like you're. I do I have. I'm a, I have a bachelor's a, degree in nursing. Yeah. But um, okay, so he graduated a year before I did, and I, I said, okay, so what's your plan? What do you want to do? And he's like, I don't really know, and he had discussed going into the service, and I thought, I don't think that's a good idea. Like, I just, I felt it was a bad time. I think I don't know if it was around the Gulf War, but I just, I felt like it was just like kind of a cop out. I thought he was being lazy and didn't want to kind of figure out what he was good at because I don't really feel like he he knew at that time you know he was good at sports but that was about it um I remember in high school he would be copying off my paper and and the teacher would be like you know keep your eyes on your paper you know Charles or whatever and I would be like get off my paper like stop you know or whatever because I was afraid afraid that my dad would like kick my ass because if I didn't have good grades he would be pretty pissed so anyway um so you went through this period of not being sure of what he wanted to do. And at that time I said, you know, like, okay, choose a trade, go to school, like figure it out, but you need to do something. So at that time we were apart for about three years and then um, he eventually figured out what he wanted to do. And I was in college taking my prereqs for nursing and um, we decided like, hey, we love each other and we know what we want and why are we playing games? like. I don't know, maybe trying to make each other, you know, the stupid games you play when you're young, you know, but at the, we were still intimate because we had great sex even back then. And uh, anyway, so we got back together and we've been together ever since. So that was like early 2000. So like, or, okay. or, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and during that, like you said, the three year window when you were mm -hmm. apart, you shared with me, like you were still enjoying Sex, like sex has been yeah. a core competency, a core component of your life. Oh, I, like it, I, I remember from a young age being very, um, and, I, and it's not that I was like abused in any way. People think, oh God, she, was she, does she have daddy issues or things like that? No, I just, I always remember being like having this sexual aura about me or, or feeling sexual or just, uh, just, I don't know, knowing what felt good with my body. And I, I don't know from a young age and, um, 
with him, he was kind of the opposite where he hadn't had a lot of sexual experiences and we were essentially each other's first sort of. Um, <laughs> Wait, time on. I love this essentially. What, what does, well, I mean, I had an experience prior to that, that was kind of not necessarily, um, I don't know how to put it, but it wasn't, uh, I didn't necessarily agree, but I d didn't disagree. So it kind of happened. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't really count that just yep. because it was a situation that kind of evolved. And I, I anyway, so I really consider him and like a consensual, um, fornication, if that's the right word. Yeah, is that the right word? Sex. Sex. We can say sex. Yeah, yeah, we whatever. Say, I mean, this is, this so that was thing. like, you know, said so for us, that was like um, our first experience was together. And um, yeah, and it was pretty special even back then. Short, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it was pretty cool. So, so yeah, so we each, I always say like we're each other's first and we'll be each other's last. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And then we fast forward, you guys get married. We got married. So after he figured, okay, I'm gonna like go into the police academy. I kind of know my way, and I was really proud of him. Um, and he was, I mean, a great, great officer. He really took pride in what he did. He received many, many um, awards, and he was on a special unit. Like so, he did really well, and um, I was really proud of him. And um, then he was injured, um, so he had several knee surgeries on his knee. Unfortunately, he had the, I don't even know that they had the option that he could do desk, like sit at the desk, but they said, well, you know, you're in therapy or whatever, you can sit at the desk. And he, he was, it was not for him he, because he was just kind of like in the mix, always had to be on the go. He loved the adrenaline. So that it kind of wasn't him. So he did take a duty, duty disability. He received full, full pension. And, um, so yeah, so I mean, he served almost 20 years. So it was like pretty awesome. Yeah. And to make it out of Detroit for, for that amount of time is pretty awesome. It's a long time so, in Detroit. Yeah. So, um, and he sacrificed a lot. He worked a lot of overtime. He drove really shitty cars so I could have the nice cars so I could, you know, work and, and go to school. And um, he did a lot like to, to help me uh, further my education because like at that time my parents weren't able to kind of help me. So it was a good thing. Of course, is that whole yeah. time you end up getting, I mean, RN into nursing. Yeah. Talk to me about that for a second. Cause you, you had, it wasn't like you just went to a hospital. I'm just going to be an RN. Yeah. You spend time in as yeah. a prison nurse, right? Like you have was, some yeah. really, really crazy stuff. Yeah. It was really cool. So in high school I took a program, it was a co-op program. And at that time, it's so funny. I had some, um, some, a couple girlfriends who were going to do, were, were doing it too. And, um, so we would go to school for a few hours and then the last part of our day, we would go to the nursing home and we would give, um, patients baths or like showers or whatever. And, um, you know, we got to kind of like shadow the nurses or whatever and kind of see what they do. So for me, I loved it. Like I am a self selfless human when it comes to, um, people who are ill and, and vulnerable. And, um, for me, that is, I feel like, and I don't need to get emotional, but I feel like in this industry, like I, I'm missing that and I miss giving back to the community. So for me, it was a beautiful thing and I loved it. The good, the bad, the ugly, the cute little Irma who used to spit and pinch us because she was so pissed off that we wanted to give her baths, you know, whatever. Cause you know, she was old, like, leave me alone. Like, I don't, I don't want to do this. Like, let me do what the hell I want to do. But, um, at the end of the day, I loved being able to give back and to, um, take care of people and their most vulnerable and, and, you know, um, you know, I, I, I just love, I love the human connection. So for me, when I did that, I knew like, that's what I wanted to do. And there was nothing anyone could say to me that was going to change my mind, no matter how difficult it was. I just knew when I could make somebody smile, when I could, you know, make their day better, when I could make them feel good. Like for me, I was complete. And that's, mm -hmm. and that from that point on, I knew I want to be a nurse and this is, this is my passion and this is what I'm going to do. So, which is such a beautiful story, but how does the shift go from, yeah. I'll say traditional nursing yeah. or something like that into right the right. prison and system? So, oh my gosh. Okay. So, um, 
um, at the time my my husband was uh, still on the force or whatever so he was working and and a lot of times I remember asking him when he come home like how was your day like what happened he, and he would say like I don't want to talk about it you know like when I come home like you're like this is like therapy for me like I just I don't want to talk about my day it's like kind of like the same shit when you keep seeing bad day after day you become cynical you become jaded you become hard desensitized and and that's kind of who he was becoming so when he came home he just kind of wanted to forget about that and and I, I don't want to go into statistics but um, statistically, a lot of um, police officers or people in law enforcement, um, they struggle with addiction of some sort, whether it be alcoholism or, you know, whatever it is, they, they tend to have unhealthy vices. And, and um, I was grateful that, you know, he, he didn't have, I don't know what that was, <laughs> that he didn't have that, you know, he would just come home to me and, it, and things would be good. So. I, I learned, you know, over the years, not to kind of ask how his day was, but I was just really happy that he came home safe. And that's just, I mean, ultimately that's what I wanted. But I, I, I just thought like, okay, let's talk about your day. Because I'm so intrigued with, um, you know, I, like I love watching Forensic Files and like all of those like true crime things. But I guess when you're living in it and that's your reality, you don't want to bring it home. So because of that, I thought, okay, I want to help to understand what he's going through how can I do that so I had a girlfriend and she said you know I'm doing jail nursing I think you should do it I'm like okay like I don't know anything about it but hey we can do it on the weekends we can make great money whatever so I um, started at the Oakland County Jail and um, I was on midnights of course because you're gonna get the shit shift mm -hmm. and um, I honestly really fell in love with it and I think because it was not traditional nursing like you know, the doctors were gone, I'm working midnights, and and you you kind of, like, I was able to kind of uh, dig into the criminal justice system, like, okay, this person's in here for this, and what does that mean, and it, I don't know, it, it became exciting to me because I could relate some of those things to my husband, and I kind of got it, okay, you know, these people are coming through, they're detoxing, they're, they're in for this, and, and, and you see their behaviors, and you see how they act, and how they treat you, and, and you can kind of understand, okay, I can see why, you know, he might be jaded, and, and you know, those, those types of things. So, for me, it was a, a way to kind of relate to him, um, but it was, it, was, it was really cool, it was interesting, because it wasn't conventional nursing, you know, you got to kind of be a different personality, you know, it was yeah. kind of cool. Did kind of you ever feel unsafe? There? I did. You know, there were a few instances where, not so much in the Oakland County Jail, but when I went to, over to Macomb, I did because I worked in the um, the tanks, or is what they call them, mm -hmm. or the receiving area. So these were newly processed inmates that came in that were coming off, that were newly arrested, that were picked up for drugs, that were picked up for criminal sexual conduct, were picked up for aggravated assault, murder. Okay, so these are people just coming in through the county jail. So they're pissed off, they don't have drugs, they're, or they, they, they don't have their drugs, they're caught doing drugs, they're um, maybe picked up on parole, they're on parole and they're picked up, you know, so, so these people are pissed, they've just been tased, mm -hmm. so it's like they're totally pissed off um so that's kind of a little bit different but at oakland county it was really cool because um i didn't work in the receiving tanks or whatever and i i, I got them when they were kind of acclimated to their their area and um i don't know it, w it was just different it was kind of like a, a calmer setting but it was still really interesting because when they would come down for their physicals and things um you got to interview them and 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 i don't know it was it's just it's just different you're diff you're dealing with a different demographic it, it, it was it was really interesting and i think what it did for me it it helped me to realize um a lot about different cultures um people from like that were dirt poor that had nothing to lose so it's like there were times that i did feel unsafe but i think at the end of the day um i conveyed to them like I am firm, but I am fair. I'm not here to judge you. I'm here to help you. 
you know, uh, regardless of what you've done, like this is my job and I have an ethical obligation to do the, these things for you. So if you treat me respect, with respect, I'm going to do the same for you. If you're shitty to me, I'm going to give it right back. Absolutely. You know, but it took me a long time, like about like six or seven months, you know, I had pee thrown on me. At, I've, they had people call me names, you know, because it's like, they don't respect you. When they don't respect you, they'll treat you like shit. Once they earn your, re you earn their respect, they tr they treat you a different way, but it, it it's like common sense is not that common, and I didn't have a lot of it. You know, I was I didn't really I didn't a hundred percent like That's... I didn't realize like I don't know some of the I I, I mean. I don't know. I, I guess uh, I, I wouldn't say I don't have common sense, but street smarts is completely different than book smart. I was book smart, but street smart. I hadn't been exposed to the element of crime or the, you know, the element of maybe somebody who had been in um, a situation where they had negative uh, contact with the police all the time. It was never a good thing. So, you know, it's like two different worlds. So it's really eye opening. Well, it's so me. intriguing because to me, who I would view to be now, mm -hmm. you're incredibly street smart. Yeah, it took a long time. Yeah. But, like, but I've been burned. Like I said, it took pee to be thrown on me. It took, you know, for me to kind of actually deal with that. And I owe a lot of that to correctional nursing because you, you really kind of get to know. I don't want to say I'm not like a therapist or anything, but you get, kind of get to know where why people act a certain way. Like they were exposed to this, and that's why they are the way they are. It's not personal. They're going to call you a cracker, you, you know, because I'm white and I'm a figure of authority, and it's not personal. It's mm -hmm. displaced anger. Okay, they're pissed off. They're there. Like it, it's not personal. And I think you have to have a tough outer shell. So what it did for me, it helped me to. Um, develop that and not take things personally and and understand that you know um they're just pissed off because they're there it's not you and if you kind of let your guard down and you talk to them like a human and you treat them like a human and you have respect with them they will respect you and and they will to be able to connect and you know i mean not always but a lot of times you know that's that's kind of what they want they wanted to be heard they wanted to be listened to they wanted to be treated like a human being not a criminal so to speak you of know? course because we're we're all, I think at any given point, we're all capable. We're all, I think, I, be, I still have faith in humanity, and I, in humanity and I do believe at the end of the day, most of us are, there's more good in the world than there is bad. And um, I think if, if, if we kind of recognize that, I, you know, and, and I don't know, I, I lost, kind of lost my train of thought, but at the end of the day, I think we're, we're, we're all the same, but I, we're all capable of making one bad decision that can change the rest of our life. And I think if, if we kind of understand that and, and, and not saying let them know, like it's not okay to, to murder somebody. However, I, I don't know the situation that they were in. I don't know how I would react in their situation, but I think we're all capable of, of, of uh, making one bad decision that can change the rest of our life, so. Well, of course, and I love that. I mean, I oftentimes say, Murder's bad, right? But if someone came into your house and was mm -hmm. going to threaten your daughter or your mm -hmm. family, 100%. it doesn't even cross your mind. Like, they'd be dead. That's it. That's why I have a 38 special. Right? I because, mean, and it, yeah, and with a laser because I'm not that great of a shot. Right. Let's be honest, <laughs> you know? But, but yeah, that's, that's why I have That's why I carry it. And, and because you just, you just never know. No. And so. Well, and if we backtrack, right, you get married and you said that from the sexual side of you, and I'd like yeah. to weave back and forth because I, I truly view you, you have this truly brilliant story about business not only as a nurse but also where you sit now but there's been the sexual undertone that's just always been there always. right like consistently always. and so you, you get married and you said that you decided to sit down with your husband or expose him to we'll yeah. say the quote-unquote lifestyle yeah and if someone doesn't know what the lifestyle is would you mind yeah. explaining what that means and how that works and okay so it, it's kind of crazy but i remember one night we went out and this is a little um prior to us getting it and um, I was like, wow, like, and my husband even said, he's like, oh my gosh, like the women were so nice to you and everybody was so nice. I'm like, this is like the coolest bar, like everyone's just so nice. And I realized we were at a lifestyle party. So we learned what the lifestyle was and because I had no clue that any of this ever existed. I know, so stupid, I, did, I never knew. But like, but you, no, you like no. sex, you didn't know. No clue. I knew like people like, 
you know, maybe entertain other people, but I didn't know there was an actual lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So, um, after my husband and I got married, like we had talked about like, oh, you know, when we were apart, did you have sex with anybody? Or like, did you experiment? And he was like, nah, like, like I didn't like, he would go to strip clubs here and there and like flirt around with people. He, but he never had, I'm like, you never had sex with him. He's like, no, I'm like, seriously, no. And he's like, no, he's like, I knew you're my queen and that was it. And it just, I just knew like whatever. And I was like, well, that's fucking bullshit. Like mm -hmm. I'm going to get you laid this year. So like the first year we got married, at least the first couple of years, I was like, okay, I'm going to get you laid. We're going to have fun and, and whatever. So I signed us up on the site and, and he's like, what the hell? So, so we had fun with, you know, other couples, single girls, and we just kind of were exploring his sexuality more because for me, I was more experienced. Mm -hmm. Um, but really not as much as I really thought once I get into porn, I realized I wasn't as experienced as I thought really wasn't. Nope. So, so kind of during that lifestyle side, mm -hmm. when the first time that goes on, are you guys watching each other? Like how, how does that? Yeah. Like, We're like, okay, there's soft swap, which is like, just like girl, girl. And the guys watch, there's full swap where you exchange with your part, like partners completely, mm -hmm. you know, then there was this whole other aspect where you like, Day of it, and we're like, no, we don't like, no, I don't have time for that shit. Like, I don't want to be married to somebody else. I don't want to take anyone else on a date, that type of thing. So for us, like, it was more about it being together, watching mm -hmm. the other partner being pleased, and that type of thing. So that's kind of what we did. Like, if I wasn't attracted to the guy, but I was attracted to the girl, we do a soft swap. Mm -hmm. So it was like the rule was we never took one for the team. Although I did take one for the team a couple times because I was a girl so hot. Like, you should just be able to. And I'm like, fuck. I'm gonna fuck this guy, whatever. Yeah. You know, but for the most part, like he always has made it about me, you know, and God, he's so like unselfish and I, I'm a hypocritical bitch sometimes and it's yeah, not fair. Yeah, because you're super selfish with this. 100%. Yeah. No, and I don't even like to admit that <laughs> because it's putting it out there. Like, oh, you're the coolest wife. Well, maybe really I'm not. Maybe I'm more to deal with than people actually think. So good, mm -hmm. okay? I'm not that fucking cool sometimes, you know? So um, ultimately, He's the shit. He's amazing. Mm -hmm. He he is a much better partner than I could ever dream to be. 100%. Mm -hmm. And I know that. And when people say, oh, you're lucky to have her, it's like, well, maybe I'm lucky to have him because he's pretty fucking awesome. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So, we, we, we did that, you know, for, God, I remember, like, throwing sex parties. I was making chocolate chip cookies cookies naked and like having all this fun and, and all here in greater Michigan we'll say 100%, greater Detroit 100 we were living our best life so to speak and yeah. I hate to use that douchebag term but why you're why you're a nurse true. while yeah. he's a cop oh 100%. right it's just like we were just having fun like for seven years and I think at the end of the day it's not like we were hardcore swingers like we want to fuck we want to bring this girl or guy home tonight it was more like we enjoy the atmosphere. We enjoy being sex positive. We enjoy, I enjoyed dressing up sexy and, and dancing with girls and like just having fun. You know, it wasn't necessarily, we're going to fuck that couple tonight. Like most of the time we never brought anybody home. It was mm -hmm. just kind of like, you know, just being around the atmosphere, the testosterone wasn't crazy. And we, we just had a good time. We were enjoying life and enjoying feeling sexy. So it was, it was good. So at what point in your life do you remember, like I, th I think quintessentially sex is this special thing and not implying mm -hmm. that it's not special. Yeah, yeah. Right, I don't know your stance on it, but like mm -hmm. there's some disassociation from if someone's listening, you're married, it's like you're with one partner, it's gotta yeah. be very special and intimate. And somewhere along your evolutionary journey, you're like, it sounds like it's just sex, right? Like it's just a, something between a man and a woman that's yeah. in our DNA that we should just do it and, mm -hmm. Like, when did that happen? You know, I, 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 I don't know that it was like something that clicked. I just, I, I think part of, you know, getting into the lifestyle had to do with some things that had happened in my life, mm -hmm. you know, and I thought, okay, like, don't go through a midlife crisis like my dad did, like, just have fun, you know, enjoy sex and get it out so you don't cheat on me down the road. Like, in all honesty, yeah, I, I wanted him to experience it and realize, like, I have the platinum pussy. Yeah. That's it. This shit is platinum. Okay? I love it. That's it. This yeah. is the money. This is the shit. Mm -hmm. Like, you can have all these other, you know, B-list bitches, but this is fucking the shit. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's like I knew it, but I had to prove it. Like, sorry. That's all right. So, like, so for me, like, uh, part of it was that. Um, but no, I, I lost track of the question because you know whatever. But I, 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 I don't know. Um, I lost track of the question. No, it's sorry. fine. So, it's you, fine. so you more or less said like, how did it? Like the disassociation because what? Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. So I, I feel like when I don't overanalyze things and I just kind of think like it's it's just sex it's nothing more like I feel like when I have time to sit and think about it then I start overthinking because I kind of overanalyze but I think at the end of the day we we are all we're not really truly meant to be monogamous I feel like there's only a few like beavers and like there's only a few um warm blooded mammals that are that are truly meant to be monogamous so I I I feel at the end of the day, we all want variety and, and we all want, you know, to, to be desired and to feel sexy and to, to experience something different, you know, but at the end of the day, I only want to cuddle with someone. Like I only want to share certain, um, parts of, of, of intimacy with someone and that's him. Mm -hmm. Like that's my husband, you know, sex is just sex and that's just it. It's, it's, it's primal. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's just fucking, it's feeling good and, and it's nothing more. However, for a lot of people it is more and it's hard for a lot of people to, to separate that. But I don't know. Maybe if you have enough sex, you, I don't know. Maybe it's just who we are or how our DNA is made. But, but he, at the end of the day, like sex is just sex. There's sex and then there's love and there's intimacy. I mm -hmm. only want to take care of him. I only want to grow old with him. I only want to share certain things with him. And, and there's other people I just, I just want to fuck and it felt great and we had a great time and that's it. And I'm done. Like, I don't feel a connection with them other than sexual energy. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what clicked and, and why that happened or, or how we disassociated that. But for whatever reason, maybe it was forced because of things that have happened in my past. And maybe it was organic or a combination of both. But it just happened. And that's just... Well, it works, right? It's not so much yeah. to, to judge or question. For me, it's... I love what you said about beavers because this is... There's no good way to segue into this. I do inherently agree with everything you just said, like the primal nature to go out and especially as men. Reproduce. Right, it's that's in all our we do. physiological DNA. That's, that's how all. we're wired. Yep, let's go You're get somebody wired. pregnant. Excuse me. Over and over yeah, and over yeah. again. Like in, you, and women, right? And mm -hmm. to be sexist, you stay home, that's take okay. care of the kid. Right, no, like but this is all um, goes back to, uh, no, like you said, primal, um, I don't want to say caveman, but that's just, that's just kind of how things were designed to be well absolutely like abor yeah. ab aboriginal yes cultures right now in yeah. africa are still operating the same way it's a 100%. tribe of people everybody yes. has sex with the other ones your the goal is reproduction for survival that's it and you still have the person the man and the woman that are your person that's right, right. that's it and that's my chalk like that's it yeah like that's it mm -hmm. but then over time we've who knows why right but the thing of marriage has to be between just one man and a woman and you get married and I think that's oftentimes one of the reasons for like high divorce rates, things like that, right? Like that level of not being truly satisfied, not having, at least as a man, a woman that's sure. sexually in touch with herself or sure. willing to explore, right? I think we're already predisposed to want to go out and smell different flowers. And, and spread your seed, which I get. Not saying like I'm always okay with that because I think mm -hmm. there's a part of me because of what my whole dad's situation, mm -hmm. it pisses me off. Yeah. But you know, and, and I can't help that, but, but that's science and that's, that's the way it is. Of course. So, and I don't want to only because you brought it up a few times and I don't want to dive into it. No, it's fine. But the dad side of things at some yeah. point in your life, so can you, we at least brush over to say like when that inflection point was like your your mom yeah. and dad were married. You had a good childhood. I had it. And people always think like, Oh yeah. You know, because she did adult, she has, you know, these, she was, had daddy issues or she was this or she was that. And it wasn't that. I had a great childhood. Mm -hmm. My dad was present. He was, you know, always there for, you know, he made sure, you know, I, I did well in school and academically and in sports. He was, he was there. Like he was encouraging and there wasn't uh, drug abuse, alcohol. Abuse. There was nothing of that sexual nature, nothing. So he was great the first 20 years of my life. And then mm -hmm. he just went through his own midlife crisis yep. 
Um, and you know, it's like, I don't know if it's good or bad because in all honesty though, I, I honestly feel that during the most important parts of my life, he was there for me. He was solid. He was a great father. He was a great husband. Like he, he was there for me during the developmental parts, mm -hmm. what I think it's like birth to five years are the most important. Yep. And he was there and he, he did everything. I don't want to say he was supposed to do, but he did everything he was supposed to do and he did it well. Mm -hmm. Okay. He was a great provider and, and all those things. And then after like, you know, after 20 years, he decided that, you know, Hey, I've done my job. My kids are eight, both, you know, I was, my sister was 18. I was 20. I did what I was supposed to do. Now I'm going to live for me. Mm -hmm. And at that point he kind of did what he wanted to do and kind of left us high and dry. And that really pissed me off. So those abandonment issues, um, maybe, maybe is, is, you know, what kind of, you know, uh, some of the insecurities, you know, or mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. Um, and you know, and like I said, it's not fair to my husband because he's great. Absolutely. He is the ideal partner. Like he's amazing. Mm -hmm. And you know, he's kind of reinforced, Hey, I'm not your dad. Like, Hey, I'm here for the long haul, no matter what, no matter, you know, through thick and through thin, through sickness and health, like I'm here. So, um, you know, people say, Oh, you know, you're lucky. She's like, you're lucky to have her. Well, I'm pretty lucky to have him because he's pretty fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. So. What I find to be so interesting, right? We have the intellectual side of our brain and the emotional side. Right. Because intellectually, you say it's in our DNA to go out and spread our seed. Yep. Okay. The emotional side of our life, you have the emotional tie to your father who just inherently wanted, I'm not going to say that he went out and spread his seed, but at some point. But he point, did. And it's okay. Like it. Right. It, I don't know him. So. It is what it is. Yeah. If it looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's a duck. And Fair. that's what he did. And that's okay. You know, that was his choice. Yeah. And, uh, you know. But it's just fascinating how we can concept, like we can intellectualize something, but the emotional ties that we have to it almost throw intellect out the window, right? Because you, you mm -hmm. guys are real time iterations of having that work the right way where you can spread your seed and that would keep you guys close together. And it's just beautiful, like getting to know your husband before the interview. Right. Phenomenal. Mm, I know. Right? Like mm -hmm. truly just an amazing individual. And to see how you've used that to actually, in my opinion, draw your relationship even closer, right? It's just, a, it's a, it's a beautiful thing to see from the outside and to have your relationship grow over Oh my God. I don't know how 20 years. plus years. Right. Through me scooping sherbet at Baskin Robbins. And then he'd come in and try to get extra for his brownie limo. He's like, can't you get me a little extra? I'm like, no, I'm going to get fired. This by the book, like, mm -hmm. you know, and then I end up doing adult, but he would be like, can't you get I'm like, no, I can't. I can't get fired, you know, because I, they were Yugoslavian. I was afraid, like, oh my God, they'll fire me. Of and I needed the job. I walked in, I walked to work. <laughs> and he just wanted a little extra. It's like, no, it's not happening. He just gets so pissed off, but it is what it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we fast forward a little bit, right? Because you have your husband that ends up getting injured. You shared that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have your sister that you said is a couple years younger than you. Yeah. And That's there's me. some things that go on that way. Yeah. And all of a sudden you have a full house of yeah, people. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And a lot of debt with not a lot of money. <laughs> I've, been there, I've been there, right? I, right. I've been yeah. bankrupt. I get it. Right. I own it. Car repo. Like, yeah. oh my God, I woke up. But I'm kind of glad that thing fucking left because that thing was like on its way out anyway. It only went 35. Dodge Stratus, go fuck yourself. Like, sorry, that Good was a you. shitty car. Yes. Sorry. But that, that ends up being that point where you make a pivot. Like you're, you're yeah. a nurse at that point. And you decide you need to help take care of the family. Yeah. Well, I started webcamming first. Okay. And I, I was like, gosh, we're what, doing what, like, what year was that? That was 2012. Okay. Or excuse me, 2011, the end of 2011. Mm -hmm. It was like November it, around the same time I started my Twitter and, uh, I started uh, webcamming and I was making really good money. And then this guy convinced me I had to come out to L, uh, at that time I went out to Sacramento. He's like, oh yeah, come out here. We'll get some photos. He kind of ended up being creepy. And I was like, that's not going to work for me. Not happening. But anyway, it, things happen for a reason, but it opened my eyes like, okay, I can do this. I can make money, you know, webcamming. And he, you know, he did open doors. So I'll, I'll give him credit for that. Mm -hmm. Um, and then while I was webcamming, someone was like, oh, maybe you should do like, uh, like, or film and I was like I don't really think about it I don't know how to do it and um, 
together him and I were like, okay, if you know, these are the big companies, if you can kind of reach out to them, nobody wanted to take a chance on me. They're like, oh gosh, you're like a MILF, you know, you're a tired mom working midnights as a nurse. Like nobody, no, we don't know you. <laughs> How so, old were you then? Uh, like 32 ish, 33. And that, that makes them like, it's crazy. And that is like, yeah. that's old. Like that's a, m- oh, in porn, you're like a grandma. And at the time, that's not, yeah, I mean, it was just like, you're a MILF. I shouldn't say grandma, but you're like, you know, you're kind of past your peak at that time. Okay. And I was like, okay. Um, so um, we did it kind of old school way. We sent, I went and got a photographer and uh, pictures and I, I, we sent them out for like over four, a four month period. And then finally someone took a chance. I'm like, okay, fine, come out. Like, okay, we'll give you a girl, girl. Like, you know, come out, shoot your scene. Like, it was kind of like, yeah, just kind of like a filler scene. Like they didn't really give two shits about me. I didn't know anybody. Mm-hmm. You know, what do I really have to offer? And then um, I, I probably, I had the toughest director that there is to date. Like, I, yeah, no doubt he mm-hmm. is. Uh, he was not the kindest to his staff. He was uh, really r- kind of rough around the edges. And I was very nervous. I would remember shaking and like, oh my God, I don't know if I can, it was only a girl, girl scene. Because um, you had been with women prior to that, right? Like yeah, it wasn't yeah. like a new. No. But I w- I've always been very like nervous with women. With guys, it's kind of like, ah, eh, they don't expect too much. You just give it up. They're going to enjoy themselves. But with women, you want to make sure that they're comfortable and you're not going to offend them and all those types of things. So my first scene was a girl, girl. It was mean bitches. Let me be the girl that gets beat up because let me not hurt a woman because I'm not really good at that. Like mm-hmm. if I have to pretend or even think about like doing something, it's not going to work because that's not my nature. I'm a pleaser, right? Mm-hmm. So I work with Eva Carrera. She's a, I don't know if she's Russian or like Hungarian or Ukrainian. Anyway, she's a tough broad, so she just kind of beat me up a little bit, and I, I enjoyed it. Like, mm-hmm. I don't mind taking direction from a woman. It's good. So the director, he was he was tough, but it ended up being a good scene, and, and you know, at the end of the scene, he was like, okay, you know, maybe you should get a, um, uh, an agent. I'm like, I don't really know anybody. He suggested a couple agents. I went with a female just because I thought it would be the best thing, and uh, yeah, and it just it worked out from there. So That's so crazy that... Right, you you were with women in your private life. Yeah. I'm had sure. you got had you yeah. and your husband ever filmed things? Like, had you been? Yeah, not no. It was just all for fun and yeah. here and there and like once in a while. But we never like, you know, we weren't like amateur or we we never other than each other. Of course. You know, we had done. I yeah. remember I think one or two in high school or college or whatever. But that was it. Yeah. And then how long from the first girl girl scene to the first girl guy scene? Okay, so March 2012 I shot my first girl girl and then April May June. And they said, Oh, because of your age, like you're not gonna get a lot of girl girl. You're only gonna make money if you do boy girl. And um in hindsight, they're kind of they're they're right because a lot of the girl girl is with a lot of the younger girls. Mm-hmm. Um and when you're a mill, so to speak, you know, they want you to work with the guys because they can make more money off you. And it's, 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 it sells better. And right. I get that. And it does. So it was only a few months. So March, April, May, June. So it was June, 2012. I did my first boy girl, but I said, you know, if I'm going to do boy girl, I want the best of the best. I want Manuel Ferrara to be my first boy girl. That's yep. what I want. I'm not going to just film with some guy that's going to make me look shitty because it's not going to help me. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and, and Manuel and I had got on a Skype call. He, I don't want to say he discovered me because he didn't, but he took an interest in, Hey, I'd like to, like, it would be cool. I think if you did boy girl, it'd be a good idea for, for your career or whatever. If you ever want to do it, I'll shoot it for you or with you. And, uh, we shot it. And I remember I was so nervous. I was shooting with, um, Chris streams. Um, excuse me. I don't know if it's Chris streams or his partner. I can't think of it. Maybe Chuck would know. But anyway, uh, it was for um, a Jules Jordan uh, film at that time. And anyway, so I was so nervous and I thought, oh my God, I have to remember lines. I'm horrible. I don't, I don't public speak. Like, this is awful. All I know is just sex because that's all I know. Um, so when we started filming, I, I, Chuck, my husband had said, just talk dirty. Just do what you do. Just be you. Like, you're going to do great. Like, Whatever, so I started talking dirty, and Manuel covers my mouth, and he says, "Shh, shh, shh." And I thought, "Oh my God, what am I doing wrong?" He's like, "It, it doesn't sound. It's too fake. It's too fake." And I'm like, "But this is just this is how I have sex. 
like, this is all I know. I don't, I don't know how to do anything any other way. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, it just, it just sounds too porny. And I was like, well, but this is just how I generically have sex. And that's just how him and I are banter. And that, that's just all I knew, you know, yep. you know, and, um, anyway, so anyway, so we go through the scene and whatever, and I, I think it turns out well, but it's probably one of my worst scenes ever because I don't know how to open up. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> it's just like going through the motions, just like sex. Um, uh, uninhibited, but 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 like not real good direction, mm-hmm. because the director was like, okay, just you know, kind of go through the motions. And Manuel, very seasoned at that time, kind of led the scene and 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 opened up how he thought was the right way to open up. Um, but I think in Manuel's mind, he thought I, I was being fake, but that was the only thing I knew, and I, I didn't know anybody to tell me any different. I had no direction, and uh, anyway. It, it went well, I guess, for a first scene, but how well, I'll never know to this day because I never now. get constructive criticism on the scene. You just don't know. Yeah. You know, you just kind of go through, okay, all right, um, we need a mill for the next scene. Okay, she can fill the spot or we'd like her because we like her dirty talk, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. I, I remember filming um, one of my first scenes for... Um, Brad Armstrong in a Wicked movie, and I filmed with the late Bill Bailey. And Bill Bailey, uh, I don't know, he's, um, anyway, he's since passed away, but Mm -hmm. um, one of the kindest, most sweetest, amazing uh, human beings, aside from porn, um, that that I've ever met. Very genuine human being. Anyway, um, uh, may he rest in peace. But Anyway, getting back to uh, the film with Brad Armstrong. So I was nervous because when you film with Wicked, you have a ton of dialogue. And, and I, again, horrible at public speaking. Like when it comes to sex, that just I'm okay with that. But I don't want to talk about people because then they can look at me and judge me and pick me apart. I don't want to know all that. So anyway, I have a lot of dialogue. And I remember Bill saying, like, just relax. Like, you're going to be fine. It's going to be fine. You're going to be great. And he went over the dialogue and he was so sweet. And I was like, okay, I, I feel like I've got this. But I really didn't. Um, so we we get into the sex portion, and all of a sudden I start talking dirty, and Bill looks at me. I, I'll never forget. Like he looks at me like, holy shit! Like he's like, you're the sweetest girl, but you've got the filthiest mouth. Like during sex, and and I think people were kind of surprised because I was just a sweet, nervous girl from Michigan with this accent that Brad still makes fun of. But um, the dirty talk kind of kind of took him over the edge and I don't know if that's kind of something that I was known for but um whatever it is what it is yeah. good times good times it sounds like great times yeah. so we fast forward from then to now how many scenes roughly in total right and, and how like I have so many just general questions out of sheer oh, curiosity yeah, right yeah. like a scene that appears on film is what 15 20 minutes of runtime on yeah, average depending yeah depending but generally about 20 minutes or so. How long does it actually take you to shoot that scene? Like from when the camera yeah. rolls from the first, I don't know if there's a start, like, yeah. mm-hmm. is it, is it take you five hours of having sex? Like how does that work to get the oh 20 God. minutes? And people ask that all the time. Like, Oh my gosh, you must be so tired. That's so much sex. And, but in all actuality, like, you know, if it goes more than 45 minutes, that's extremely long. Okay. So generally they'll say we need 25 minutes and then they'll take, 20 minutes of it or or whatever so generally they just want to make sure that they have enough um to cut if they need to 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 make changes or whatever but generally it's about i mean 25 30 minutes Mm -hmm. okay and they'll tell you like this means switch positions this means okay come time like or whatever so you know and every director is different some will want you to go five minutes in one position completely still you are stationary the guy like this is the angle um, so it, it really depends on the director, but generally if there's more than 45 minutes of sex, like that's, that's a lot. And a lot of girls are like, oh my God, 45 minutes. Like, you know, that's a lot, like, holy shit, that's a long day for them. You right. know, most of it is just, you know, you get there, it's makeup, it's hair, it's lighting, it's sex stills, it's dialogue. It's this, uh, you know, one shot, a two shot, like, you know, so it's, it's more hurry up and wait mm-hmm. than it actually is the sex you know so makes sense yeah and what was it like the first time like how many scenes in before your husband came out and watch right because yeah you can only oh shoot, my gosh you can only have sex scenes so many times like in so many mm-hmm. states or right mm-hmm. like you can't 
you can't have sex on camera in all 50 states legally, right? right? Yeah, right. Yeah, 100. percent So I mean, I, I would have to say, like he he generally he would you know maybe he would he wouldn't always come out when I would when I would film. Mm -hmm. So there were times where he would he would be at, be at home and, and because we have a family and things like that and. You know, it just all depended on the, the situation. Um, but it wasn't really until I started directing that he would come around. He would mm -hmm. never wanted to be that creep. He never wanted to make a woman, a girl feel un, uh, uncomfortable or another guy. He's very confident in who he is with his sexuality, with his size, just in every aspect of who he is as a human being. He's mm -hmm. very, always been very confident, which is a huge attractive quality which i i love like if he was an insecure guy very unattractive right um so i i always liked that about him um and admired that and wished that i could maybe be a little bit more like him mm -hmm. um but we're all made differently but anyway so i think I, I don't think it was until i actually started to direct and produce that he actually came on set you know and really yeah, yeah, and he, I mean, you don't, he, he didn't want to ever change who I was or how I performed or any of that. You know, he wanted to be, to be my authentic self. So, and it's, it's like directors and producers of other companies, they don't want spouses, they don't want significant others on set because of the, you know, some people get jealous or it changes kind of the dynamic. And, and, uh, but yeah, he was always, he was always good. So. And then was there a point where you went from, I'm, doing porn, right, to I've made it, right? Like, Whew. there's, and, and I know, ego, right? I who, love who makes that. it, but like, right? yeah. something happens when you're, you know, okay, I'm shooting with this guy, and oh my gosh, I'm nervous too. Like, I now have a brand, right? I'm now, yeah. I'm now a notable person that kind of mm -hmm. gets to pick and choose what I want. You know, um, he'll tell you differently than, than what I'll tell you because um, like to this day, sometimes I don't get it and he, he's gotten it for a long time. He's like, own who you are. Stop downplaying your success. You know, do not do this when you're in a, a business meeting. It, it doesn't look good. Like you need to know your worth. So for me, it, it, it's not until recently, probably over the last year and a half, okay. two years. Yeah that I've kind of gotten to, to, to recognize and kind of know who, to know who I am, you know, whereas to him, he's known for a long time. He's believed in me well before I've ever believed in myself. And, and that's, I don't know. It's, 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 I don't know how to explain it. Like, and, it, and I'm not saying I'm, oh, I'm just so insecure because I, I believe I'm sexy. I know I'm sexy, but to know my worth, um, he's known well before I've ever believed in myself. So mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to answer the question, but probably within the last year and a half, two years where I can say, okay, no, I am Kendra Lust. I can dictate who I want to choose with. I can, I deserve this rate because I know I'm worth it. Mm -hmm. You know, where, um, yeah, yeah, it takes a while. Because you, you've won awards, right? It's not like you're like, yeah. I mean, yeah, but for a you know, long time, there's been awards on your oh. hypothetical mantle, <laughs> yeah. right? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, you know, and and for me, like all I wanted was one. I wanted my one AVN. I wanted my flashlight, and I don't know. I think those were kind of the standards I that I set for myself, and I wanted to be able to make X amount per year, you know. So mm -hmm. like I've 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 accomplished those things, and um, and now I've exceeded that, like as far as awards. And I always tell him, I'm like, you know, at this point, like, I don't really give a shit about awards. They collect dust. They don't, they don't really make you any more in the industry. Like you mm -hmm. can win best newcomer and your rate still lower than what my rate is or what uh, an accomplished performer, you know, in the hall of fame or, or, um, a new girl, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's really Awards are great. I think they're more a personal accomplishment, yeah. but as far as um, making any more money, I can guarantee I make more than the, the, the and I'm not being pompous, but I know this. I make more than 97% of the industry with my, with my, with my rates because it's, it's, it's a business and mm -hmm. it's, it's about perceived value. Mm -hmm. It's about supply. It's about demand. Um, 
branding and you know it's a lot of things there's and, only one of you and i'm not any better than any of these girls but it's all about how you market yourself mm -hmm. you know absolutely so. so you talk about rates and this is always so fascinating to yeah. me yeah mm -hmm. you get paid per scene yes. right, to, to right. how yeah. that would look and then right as the industry has shifted right now no problem that i mm -hmm. In my teens and twenties, like I started watching porn on dial-up, right? Like right? the modem yeah, and think, like yeah, and way back. Max, right? Yeah, for sure. The blurry picture, <laughs> the whole thing. Oh. My husband always says, "You wait for that blurry picture, and then the little boob comes." Oh my god! Oh, it was the most incredible thirteen <laughs> right. seconds of my life when the boobs would line yeah. up and you're staring like, "Yes." Yeah. Right. But like I remember in college, stopping by you know adult stores buying DVDs, mm -hmm. and that was still like the internet wasn't. I'm gonna say what it is now, but right, right. 2002 and three, it was a much different world than now. Mm -hmm. But to me, how's the business side of things, right? Because you're an incredible mm -hmm. businesswoman with things going on everywhere. Don't care what your rate is. This is not a money conversation. Yeah, no, we'll no, make sure no. I say that. And that's that. okay. I'm, like I said, I'm pretty transparent. <clears throat> I'm okay with that. Um, how, you're probably thinking, how is that affected or how does that equate into the, like, the big picture of Yeah, of because you, you look at, like, if you self-produce, you own your own website and you release your own content, you kind of control the upstream channel. Like you're in control. So not as mm -hmm. long as you have distribution, that's good. Right. And digital is yeah. people are following you because you are who you are. Right. Okay. You yeah. could then eliminate the variables. Absolutely. Where you could in theory, in my mind, just mathematically make more money. And, and, ab and absolutely. I think when DVD was good. Okay. It was really fucking good. Mm -hmm. When um, back in the 90s, the early 2000, 2000s, that's when, oh my gosh, people were making a shit ton of money. Okay. You know, it, it was amazing. And then the internet kind of hit. And what that did was um, it, it decreased the value of DVD. There's now like video on demand and there's all these other ways um, for these companies to make money. So um, with that, a lot of the directors and producers uh, kind of suffered financially. Um, however, I mean, I don't know. I think it's good and it's bad. And in a way, it's like if you can't beat them, kind of join them. Like mm -hmm. as far as like porn, Pornhub and, and, and those, um, those companies, that type of thing. So ultimately, I feel like it. You know, the industry has grown. There's more performers, there's more companies, you know. So, I mean, that's a good thing, but in a way it, it is bad. I don't know anything other than what has happened since 2012. Right. So I don't have much to compare it to. Ultimately, from when I was a nurse to when to adult, I'm making a shit ton more, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful for that. Um, but a, a lot, of, you'll hear a lot of the, the old school like directors and producers saying, oh my God, like, you know, I don't make near as much. And, and they don't. Um, but for me, um, from 2012 to 2019, I, I, I'm grateful because I make a lot more because there is a there there are more platforms for the performer mm -hmm. um, to to kind of do their their own type of content. But I think too the 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 shift of of what people want, like the millennials want something different than what maybe the people in the two thousands did. You know, they wanted that DVD, the unattainable, the girl that they couldn't kind of connect with where they maybe had to write. And I still get some of those, you know, 50, 60 year old guys who will send me notes and letters and, and cards and things to my PO box really? where they're not really into the internet. Yeah. You know, but a majority of my fan base is nineteen to thirty four. They're the millennials who who want the Snapchat, they want the OnlyFans, they want the amateur type stuff. So for me, I know that it has changed and, and a lot of the old, like Diabolic and a lot of those old school producers, they've lost a lot of money, but it has really become more beneficial to the performer, to the top performers where they can monetize on, you know, having a fan base and being able to cater to, to, um, the, the Snapchatters and, and the people that want that 
in the here in the now like right now what you're doing type thing so yeah. i didn't really answer your question that went really long and long and long but no you answered beautifully because like the days of the contract stars like i remember the first book that i can really remember reading for pleasure was jenna jameson's how to make love like a porn star oh my god i still have it right in, in like so this awesome. box right i was 18 or 19 and i hadn't read like just to read right we're in college you're reading yeah, textbooks and i'm like but and i was so how fascinated exciting. yeah right just by the story of her life like it's and for me, it's never been from a judgmental place. It's always been just a general curiosity. curiosity. It's like, mm -hmm. what goes on? And I don't adhere to the thing of like, you have to be abused. It has to be like, yeah, no. Like just everybody has their own path. And we like, all. Like, how did she get to like where she, like, and she, I mean, she is to this day, like, everybody knows Jenna Jameson. She everybody. was the queen of porn. Mm -hmm. Like, everybody knows heard her name or knows of her story or watched something you know, like and it is what it is the first so. naked woman in radio and howard stern's private parts right yeah. like it was like mm -hmm. this woman was everywhere at that time in life beautiful mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and to see like from that book it was a big if i remember like contract stars like you got signed to yeah so many numbers of films with a yeah production studio yes. right? Am I it was the right a very terms? prestigious Type thing when you were a contract star, I was like, oh my god, she's contracted with Vivid, she's contracted with with Hustler or or whoever it, it would be, you know. Um, and it that was a way that you could kind of gauge, you know, a star. And 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 uh, you know, these days when they're contracted, it's not as prestigious. There's there's a lot more of them. There's a lot less value, um, but it's still kind of cool. It is still kind of cool. Like I still think it's a really cool thing. We we just signed um, a girl. Her name is Desiree DeLuca, and you know, or Dolce, excuse me, Desiree Dolce, and um, and and for me, it's hard to kind of to get me excited, mm -hmm. and you know, in in this industry because so many girls come and go, and the turnover, and and whatever, and and true porn stars are really tr truly hard to come by these days, but. Um, I, I, I'm really excited for her mm -hmm. and I, I, she, she just got signed to a contract with, uh, Manwin or Brazzers and I really feel strongly about her and, and not too many people get me excited. I'm really excited for her. So guys, um, take notes, uh, Desiree Dolce and a beautiful girl. So I'm really excited about her. So contract star excited about. <laughs> Wonderful. So what is... Is, I don't want to say is there life after porn, but right? Is there mm -hmm. a time where you can imagine, like, are you going the Nina Hartley route where you'll be, I have no idea how old she is, but is mm -hmm. this like, hey, for the next 40 years I can see myself doing this? Or is this, yeah, yeah. hey, you know, at some point I'm going to just diversify and just focus on the business aspect yeah. of life? What does that look like for you? Good question. You're such a good interviewer, right? Flatter me. I yes, need it for my you ego. Are. Thank you, you are. so much. Yes, you are. You, you do a good job. Great questions. Um, you know, in all honesty, I. Um, I feel that I'm a part of me, like I said, has always been in sexual and I, I probably always will feel that way. Mm -hmm. Um, however, I, I feel I have a shelf life and, and for me personally, um, I've accomplished pretty much everything that I've wanted to accomplish in adult. So, um, I'd like to perform for another few years, but ultimately I'm always, my wheels are always turning and I'm always thinking, you know, how can I um be successful not having to be in front of the camera and my and my husband will say oh gosh if it's in front of the camera you always want to be there you know you, you but you got to think long term you know so he and it's and it's not like a, from a, a jealous or an angry place but he's thinking work smarter not harder of course you don't always want to have to be traveling and you know traveling wears on you and you know you get all anxious and when you're away and those type of things so let's you know think think um smarter not harder let's you know just because you have to work you, like you're good at sex every you know that i know that everybody knows that but like when you have to put some effort into something you know like don't get so like bent out of shape about it and he's right you know just you know sometimes i do because i'm like oh god i'm not good at it. i gotta actually put effort into that shit like you know so i get pissed off about it but but he's absolutely right you know mm -hmm. and and for me though i have to feel passion about it and about the, my book, I feel passionate about it because, um, because I don't want to say, oh, because it's about me, but because 
it's exciting to me. Like it, 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 I, I, I'm excited to be able to share a little bit about my history and my past, good, bad, ugly, and indifferent, you know, with my fans. And, and I take pride in it because it's, it's about my family, my friends and where I've come and the struggles and, and where we are. So for me, I'm passionate about that. Um, and then I, I talked to you about how I'm working on a new project and mm -hmm. I'm extremely passionate about that and I I haven't like I love performing and I'm passionate about that but aside from porn I haven't been passionate about anything other than my family and what they're involved in mm -hmm. in a long time so for me it's a good thing like and I love it and I love feeling that fire and sometimes you meet people for a reason you become friends with people and they evoke a different spark within you and um, and it's a good thing. So I'm excited. I'm working on my book, and I'm working on this other really cool project, and and I'm 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 excited. I'm passionate, and I'm on fire. Like sometimes too much. And he's like, <laughs> "Okay, are you coming to bed? Like how many? <laughs> how much longer?" But it's a good thing. Well, I certainly won't spill the beans, but the new project, as you shared it with me, is a phenomenal need in the marketplace yes. that will certainly keep you. In front, like it, it, it will change the way it'll change like a lot of the millennials think that they're doing all of these things right and they're really not you know like and it's not like a negative thing but just in general I think guys in general don't understand how women think or what they want and I'm here to just be honest and 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 explain and help like mm -hmm. if you like sex then you need to get on board with my project and that's it if you want to become better at sex if you want to become a better lover if you want to make your woman happy if if you want to be in a long-term relationship that's going to last from somebody who knows okay i've been with the same guy for how long forever like like i said i'm not perfect at it okay mm -hmm. he's way fucking better he's the way better partner on all levels sexually we're equal but i'm a little bit more greedy he's a great lover and I'm a good lover, but he's less greedy than I am. Um, so, but I'm just saying, uh, ultimately, for somebody who's been through, been through it, I, I'm sexually experienced. And I want to share that. I want you to be able to have a great sexual chemistry with your wife or your partner. And and if if that's what you want, then you need to tune in to what I'm doing. I couldn't agree more. And I, I, I find it very fascinating what the adult industry has done to the perception of sex for right on 35 so we go 30 to 18 right now and what is normal or expected from the male standpoint right oh we, the majority of us watch have watched or do consistently consume porn yes, and you assume 100%. every woman is going to perform like the star you might be oh, watching get fucking real Right, but it's, it's not a, happening. No, but it's just it's like it's and not and to I, not to bastardize the industry because No, it, and but I'm it's not like, it's like, man, there's this unreal, like it's, an, it is truly a performance, right? Like it's a sexual art. Just yes. like when you, when you watch, you know, Johnny Depp and you know, some of these, these, the actresses and actors, they're, they're performing, uh, uh, an art. Okay. The art of acting and getting you emotionally involved and attached to what they're doing. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would, I just went to see Dumbo and like, I was moved by fucking Dumbo. Okay. I was like, Oh my God. You know, so it's like, okay, yeah, they, that did it for me. So they're mm -hmm. doing their job. Just like when when um, you're watching a film, like uh, we're doing our job, but ultimately it's not reality, okay? Dumbo's not going to fly and every girl's not going to squirt, okay? Yeah. That's it. That's the good, the bad, and the ugly. Every woman is capable, but if you're you're going to be the partner... Um, that wants to take the time and if your partner actually wants to do it because not all girls actually want to I don't even like squirting I'll be honest it does not feel that fucking good mm -hmm. I could care less it does nothing for me so it, it's getting to know your partner anyway there's more to it than what meets the eye so is porn reality no it's not is it a teaching tool is it you know on some levels yes but ultimately it is just a show to get you to where you need to be for that moment. It is, it serves a purpose, sexual satisfaction, sexual release, and that is it. It is not reality. Um, and that's it. So when you say not reality, right? You no. love sex. 
I do. I do enjoy sex very much. How much of what happens on the scene? Obviously, you're flowing. You're in the moment. There's yeah. got to be some scenes where it's just mm -hmm. like yeah. everything that's there is actually real. And then there's some, and I say real, right? But yeah, but there's got to be reason. some scenes that require a much different skill in acting. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. You know, and all of that is relative. What director you're working with? Who's your talent? Ninety-eight percent of the people I work with, I'm not sexually attracted to. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you are there on set, you need to kind of go to that place to kind of get you to you to where you need to be to perform that scene. Because ultimately at the, ultimately at the end of the day, you are being paid for a sexual performance. Mm -hmm. That is it. That is it. You are not being paid to connect with this person. You're not being paid to like this person. You're not being paid to enjoy their company or what they have to say or even like what they're wearing or the, the, the role they're playing or what they do in their off time, you don't give a shit. You are there to connect with that person on a sexual level to be able to do your performance and get the job done so that viewers like what you're doing so you get hired again. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's it. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Um, and how well you do that will determine if you're going to succeed in this industry or, or not. Um, so <laughs> your question again was, I lost it. No, it's all right. It was just essentially setting up that framework for how much of it is oh, scripted. Right? Yeah. 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 I mean, obviously like, mm -hmm. like you said, I think you really answered it with there's, I don't care to name names, but there's yeah, a handful no. of people that you're attracted, not even attracted to, but yeah, like it's, very few. it's I'll easier be to flow. And then the rest is. is like, I got to put on the acting hat. And it is. And, and you know, at, at the end of the day, it's like, if your director's happy, your male talent is able to perform, that's a good day. Because there's days where you're dealing with a director that's really difficult, and you're dealing with male talent that can't keep his shit together for whatever reason. Okay, gr as girls, we can fake it. Mm -hmm. You cannot. So, y you know, it is, um, it's, it's not as easy as people think because you can have a, com I've been on set with people that I find completely unattractive annoying as fuck and I have to perform a scene. If they feel any vibe that I'm completely unattracted or that they annoy the shit out of me, what do you think that's going to affect? Exactly. Yeah. Things downstairs. And what do you think that's going to affect? That's going to make my day a lot longer, mm -hmm. you know, and things might not go as planned. So, you know, so at the end of the day, I am, you know, I am Kendra Lust when I'm working, but I'm a completely hum different human being offset. You know, and mm -hmm. but I do what I have to do to get the job done because I'm paid to be an actress, and that's what I do, and I like what I do, um, ultimately. But are some days easier than others? Yes, you know. But for the most part, um, it is more mental than it is physical. I can do the physical; physical is no problem. But mentally, it is is it is it's a mind fuck a yeah. lot of times. To put it bluntly, mm -hmm. it is it's a mind it. fuck. I, I love the candor, right? These are all things I'm. It just... is. So much of this is literally my 100% curiosity and just being honored to get to mm -hmm. know you in the industry, yeah. right? It's yeah. been a part of my life, admittedly, for you know the past mm -hmm. three or four years, it hasn't been, right? Being yeah. married, it's yeah. been... Things change. Yeah, they do, right? It's just an evolutionary spot. But if I really look from 10, mm -hmm. <laughs> just about, until 32, mm -hmm. porn was my go-to, right? right? I'm talking a couple times a day of just like... Yeah. You're bored. You look like right. it was just like it's it's yeah. a carnal response for me. Yeah, yeah, I get it. And so, as you look at your scenes, right, you're very specific with the, how much you care about your family and how much your home, and mm -hmm. like that is first and foremost. Always. And you have a very regimented schedule on how you travel and what you do. You've shared that with me. Seven days a month. If I'm traveling eight days, it pisses me off. And my talent manager, Randy, will say. He'll say to Chuck, I know she's probably going to say no, but like talk to her. Like, you know, this is beneficial for her career because he does have my best interest at heart. And mm -hmm. both of them always, no mm -hmm. matter what. Sometimes I'll get pissy with them. But at the end of the day, I know that they have my best interest at heart and it's only going to benefit, you know, my brand and, and you know, our future. And I understand that. So, um, I really, really try to stick to my seven days a month. If it gets more than that, I get a little bitchy because at the end of the day, my priority is my family. That's it. 
And, and, it, and I'm not trying to say I'm any better or any different. We all have different priorities and it's all relative to our situation. You know, if mm-hmm. I didn't have kids and I didn't have a husband that was amazing, then, you know, I might want to be gone more. You know, I would be like, fuck it, I'm, I'm out, deuces. You know, I'm going to chase every dollar. But ultimately, I really like being home. I really like being Michelle. That's mm-hmm. who I am. Okay, you can Google my name. It's not a secret anymore. <laughs> um, you know, and I, and I like being home. Is it hard to shut it off sometimes? Is it hard to separate? Yes. But at the end of the day, uh, I'm really good with just, just being me and being home with my family and so hanging beautiful. out. Yeah, no, kind of boring, kind of nerdy. He makes me way cool. Yeah. I don't even know how to pick out cool shoes. He picks out my sneaker, like my sneakers, my gym shoes, like all that stuff. Cause I always pick out the not so cute stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. So with that seven days, are you shooting all seven days? Like is mm-hmm. how often are you shooting scenes right now? Okay, so like okay, so I fly out on Tuesday. I'm I'm heading to Miami. I'm gonna shoot like four scenes and then I'm like travel days are like two days or whatever. So a day before I'll get in, I'll travel shoot four and then a, a day of travel home. So it's like six days. Mm-hmm. Um sometimes I'll do like store signings for my toy, um, sometimes I'll feature dance. Yep. Um sometimes I'm doing uh, photo shoots or traveling for like business with a new project, trying mm-hmm. to kind of like um, collaborate with people, whether they be in a different country. Sometimes you have to actually meet them to talk to them. It's it's better doing that than over the phone. So, so it it is just it just depends. Sometimes it's just shooting content because you know you can only do so much with yourself at home. <laughs> you know, solo here, solo there. It gets kind of boring. So, right. so you just kind of want to mix it up. So, yeah. yeah. Have you ever thought about bringing your husband on film? You know, I thought uh, just for like my OnlyFans stuff, yeah. and like he'll he'll entertain a little bit of like touching, and and it's not that he's not endowed enough to be able to be on film. Mm-hmm. I think it's just not his thing. And for him and I, when we have sex, he wants it to be not on film because. He's like, I just, that's not how I operate. It's just not me. Mm -hmm. Like, and I think he wants it to be something special, like between him and I. And Mm -hmm. it's like, I don't operate like that. I'm not porn. This is you and I. I don't want everything that we do to be, like things that we do to be on film. Like that's your thing, but this is us. So for him, I think it's a little bit more more sacred, Mm -hmm. you know, um, and it's more about us than it is about making money. And I get that. And that's fine, and I respect that. Um, but would I make more money doing like some of my OnlyFans stuff? 100%. If I had his, you know, penis inside me, 100%. You know, they <laughs> want to see that, yeah. But, um, but you know, I, I have to respect what he wants, and that's not what he, you know, he's not comfortable with it, and you know, and and he's great at sex. Like I said, he's he's amazing, and we have great sex. But um, for him, I think he wants that just for us, mm-hmm. and I get that. So absolutely, yeah. Just a few more questions that come to mind. Anything you want. That's fine. I appreciate that. Hanging out around, we'll just say Greater Detroit, make it a little nebulous. How often does somebody come up and like recognize you, ask for it, like, right? Because you're incredibly well known, right? Famous. I mean, one of the top performers. I don't know how you look at it. I know you're humble about it, but your name precedes you a little bit. Yeah. Is it something you go to the local grocery store and somebody comes up and like, I know you like can I get a picture with you or is it kind of like you see people looking at you from afar that Mm -hmm. because porn can still have this taboo to it that they don't want to come up and say that they know you yeah good question you know I um I don't know maybe Chuck would be better at answering it uh than I would but um sometimes people come up to me you know Mm -hmm. and like at the gym and um they'll be like hey and I I don't know if it's word travels fast or they just know him I don't know but um, I, I try generally not to ever deny a picture, no matter how bad I look, just because I always think like, ah, oh, they might not get a chance to, to like do it again, even if they're local, you never know. Mm-hmm. So I, even if I look shitty, I just try to say, okay, no problem, cool. And I try to be kind because I always think like, you know, if I were like 18 and I saw like some hot older guy or something, I'd be like, want to tell my girlfriends or something. So I try to think of it, like put it into a guy's perspective. I'm like, okay, that's cool. You know, but I, but 
I, I lie. I do lie because I have denied pictures. When I was w with my little one at a wrestling event, and they're like, can I get pictures? So if I'm with my daughter, I won't. Mm -hmm. uh, our daughter, I won't just because I'm like, eh, you know, it's not a good time, you know, or whatever. You know, so I, I, I lie. I have. But if I'm alone, I, I never deny a picture. Um, so it happens, you know, and then sometimes I'll just get like a, a message like, oh, I didn't want to just bug you, but I did see you or whatever. So, I mean, I don't. I don't sit and think about it. Um, I don't. I don't really know what happens. Yeah. But yeah, it happens here and there. Of course, and you brought up your daughter, which is. Mm -hmm. let, let's fast forward. We'll say six I keep, years. I keep thinking about you, interviewing her earlier. Which was wonderful. I, I had the phenomenal chance to sit with your daughter here. I can't same place we're that. recording right now. I can't believe that she was. I don't even want to. I couldn't listen to it because I'm like, I know she's. She's something else. But anyway, we won't oh, talk she's about amazing. that. She's amazing. I mean, such a great little athlete and so articulate. I mean. She was wonderful. I, I truly, like it was enjoyable. Okay. She'll make a name for herself, I have no doubt. Oh my God, she's something. But as we fast forward, let's say six years, okay. and she goes from seven to 13. Mm -hmm. And boys are running around and it mm -hmm. ends up being, hey, mm -hmm. th this, is, this is, the woman has the same name and looks like your mom, but has a different name, yeah. right? It has the same look. Right, right. But and I think we're so different. Right, but as far as what happens or have you thought about what it looks like to have the sure. conversation with her oh. about mm -hmm. this part of life? You know, good question because that was um, something that had bothered me for a long time, you know, and I actually reached out to, like my husband had always reassured me like, you know, don't worry about it, um, you know, just don't don't think about it. We'll handle it when the time comes, mm -hmm. and you know, just be you, and and you know, whatever. And he talked. I, I I've heard him, you know, talk to her, um, and you know, when he's laying her down to sleep, he'll say, you know, you know, your you know, mama, you know, she has to leave for work tomorrow, and she doesn't want to leave, but she has to leave, you know, for work because you know, mama works so she can give you a good life and give us a good life, and she loves you and she misses you and she wishes she didn't have to you know go to work but she does and whatever and he'll you know he'll say you know you never let anyone say anything bad about your mom your mom loves you you always defend your mom and she you know I don't know what defend means that type of thing but as you always you know stick up for your mom if someone says anything you always stick up for your mom because your mom loves you or whatever so so I think you know and he's always been very consistent with that and um you know, and I, I think I, we try to raise her to be strong. You know, she does her little boxing thing and I always think, okay, she's going to have to learn something because someone's going to talk shit about her mom. So she's going to have to be able to defend them or knock them out. And she's mm -hmm. pretty tough, but that was just by chance. It happened that she was interested in that. So I have thought about the conversation, but I think that we are raising her to be strong, to be, she's very strong-willed anyway, so that's a good thing. She's not a follower. She's very much a leader, mm -hmm. very competitive, which is a good thing. So I'm, I'm grateful that she has those qualities and she's not meek and, and, and you know, timid and, and, and those things. She's kind of like, yeah, you know, it is what it is. She speaks her mind, which is good and bad. But, but you know, I do think about that conversation, but I think, you know, that we have... And that we're raising her a way where, where she's not ashamed. I always, you know, I'll walk, and I'll walk around sometimes and without my shirt on and without, and I, you know, my clothes on and she'll say, mom, you know, your big butt, you know, your big butt or whatever, squishy or, you know, these goofy little things. And I'm like, you know what? Mama's proud of her body. You mm -hmm. should never be embarrassed of your body. This is how we were born. This is how we're made. And I'm, you know, I feel beautiful and sexy. I don't want to hear that, you know, that type of thing. But, you know, so I'm trying to just, we're trying to raise her to be strong and, and, and not be ashamed of who we are and, you know, that type of thing. And I, you know, when the time comes, whenever that time is, because I know 13 is like the new 17 and that type of thing. Um, I, I'm not ashamed of, of who I am. I'm not mm -hmm. ashamed of what I do. You know, people say, well, would you want your daughter to do the same thing? And I'll be a hypocrite and say, not at a young age. If she were married, like I was, if she were educated, like I was, and I am, and her husband were okay with that, then I would be okay with that because that would be a decision, an informed decision when she was, you know, accomplished and, and, and successful and already. And if that was something that she wanted to do, then I would be okay with it. Would I be okay with it if she's 21? Absolutely not. You're, you don't have a degree. You're not, uh, you don't know what you want in life. You're not secure with who you are. You know, those, there's a lot of unanswered questions. 
But um, when the time comes, we are prepared and, and we mm -hmm. do know how to handle it. And, and um, or we feel we have a good handle on it, but you, you don't really know. You can prepare and to the best of your ability and, and um, you know, and hope that she's okay with it. And if not, then, you know, there's so much that, w that we can do. Well, after seeing so. the interaction between you two, I have no doubt that okay. she'll be okay with it. No, I mean. <laughs> I hope. She's a little sassy thing, but that's a good thing. She like gets I said, it honestly, right? I like it. Yeah. I like it. I would, like I said, I would much rather her be like an alpha female opposed to, you know, somebody who's going to just kind of go with the flow and do what everybody else is doing. And, mm -hmm. and I love the fact that she's strong and she's feisty and that's a good thing. It's, it may be a struggle as a parent, but you know, the main thing is at the end of the day, she's, she's respects authority in school. She gets good grades. She's, she's, there's no behavioral issues in school, those types of things. So mm -hmm. she's a little sassy at the house. You know what? We can he handle that. But the main thing is when she's in society, she kind of knows what she needs to do and she does it regardless okay. if she likes it or not because you say i don't even know why school is a thing mom i'm like because it is and you have to go you don't have a choice right so kendra if someone listening wants to track you down mm -hmm. find you track you down is bad but right find i you, know connect, track you down yeah <laughs> connect with you right yeah. social handles emails websites yeah. where where do they get to you at okay perfect so um obviously i'm on twitter and instagram which is just kendra lust is Kendra Lust. I have a website, KendraLust.com. And then I'm going to uh, be launching AskKendraLust.com. So Ooh. that is the definite thing that you guys want to tune into because that's where I'll be engaging quite a bit with, with fans and both men and women. And um, yeah, there'll be a lot of cool stuff to, uh, to be, I don't know, discussed. So yeah. Look forward to that. And then Kendra, if you were to leave the listeners with one message, one takeaway, one thing that you wish everybody knew, what would it be? I love that question. And this is something I say over and over and over. And I, I just want people to know that what you do does not define who you are. So because you're a doctor doesn't mean that, you know, you're a doctor all the time, you know? Um, yes, I do film, I do porn, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, but it doesn't define who I am. That is not, does not encompass all of me. There's more to me. That is a small facet, mm -hmm. okay, of, of who I am. And not that I have to prove anything to anyone, but at the end of the day, what you do does not define who you are inside. So that's it. That's so beautiful. Kendra, thank you so Thanks. much. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. I mean, your Gosh, house. I finally looked at the camera. It's We're good. like just chatting, blah, blah, blah. That's how it should be. It's not even here. It's right? no big deal. Yeah, this bad hair, all, eh, whatever. But anyway. It's good. Cool. Well, thank you for having me. Yes.